for that anymore. <laughs> um, Rachel, for you, what do you find to be the biggest difference between doing voiceover and on-screen work? Well, voiceover, it's just about one thing. It's about how you sound. And so the direction can get very, very specific. You know, I need you to go up like, and, and. It's very, very specific, whereas on camera, it's the whole package. And so you have, um, everything's in context. But it's all about what's coming out of your mouth in voiceover. And it's actually, in some ways, harder because it's way more specific. It's like a laser. I, I think our cast would agree with you. What, are, what do you guys find to be some of the biggest challenges about doing voiceover work? I mean, you, you're all very experienced, so I'm sure you just could do it in your sleep at this point. But it, what, do you, what do you guys find to be the, the biggest challenges? Sometimes I'm like, what pajamas am I going to wear to work today? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big challenge. Well, it's so fun. It's actually such a fun world because it doesn't matter what you look like. Of course, the day you look like crap, like, oh, we forgot to tell you access Hollywood was streaming by the <laughs> But it's really what you can do with your voice, and I'm really blown away every single day what, what these people can do. And it's just, you don't have to wait for lighting and hair and makeup, and you get to be, be creative, but to your point, you have to bring the action with your voice. So for me, and I'm sure for you guys too, I internalize everything. When, Ever something's happening, I visualize I'm actually there. So a lot of people say, you know, oh, I really want to get into voiceover. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, do you have any acting experience? <laughs> you have to have that training and improv and singing to learn what your, your voice can do, and then you get to play in this amazing world. Well, and I find that it's hard. I think one of the challenging parts is that a lot of times when you record, record voiceover and you're doing a scene, the other person you're doing the scene with isn't there. And they always say that acting is reacting, because it is. If you want something to sound genuine, you have to kind of really pretend you're saying the words for the first time. And so you really have to use your imagination a lot more than if you were on a set. You should have come to visit because we all do it yeah. together. No, really, that's yeah. not so fun. I was alone. Really I will buy you a ticket <laughs> Next time you have to come. <laughs> Are you available? <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a question for Nicole or Josh or Megan, whoever wants to answer. Or all of you. Yeah. Do you guys feel like any of the characters are misunderstood? Or is there anything you would want to clear up for this fabulous crowd right now? I mean, I, I, I want to say, oh, you guys, Trixie is so misunderstood. You don't understand anything. She but can tell you that. She'd say that. Yeah. Trixie is exactly understood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I love about her. But... You know, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of misunderstood sometimes. Would you guys say that? Maybe? Spike? No. No? no? Yeah? No. Let's, have, let's show our hands. Is, Mike, is Spike misunderstood or not? Is he misunderstood? Oh. Oh. No. Oh. It's fine. I think too, like after having so many seasons of these characters, we all kind of remember the, the good moments and the happy moments, and so it's kind of like we have this um, highlight reel in our minds. It's this Facebook version, if you will, of their lives. And you know, our characters are still working out some stuff and learning things, so I think that that's easy for them to be misunderstood as they have to challenge what they know and grow. I actually love that the most. Like, when I think of the moments, I also think of the hard times. And when Twilight actually does something bad in the movie, and she's such a perfectionist to learn that, like, not everybody's perfect, perfect is boring, I'm gonna make a mistake, and I'm gonna learn from it. I thought that was so important to teach kids. And, and I like that. I like how our characters are growing with the seasons. I like that a lot. Lesson zero. <laughs> <laughs> Another question for our. Uh, writers here, is there anything topic-wise that we purposely avoid when writing the show? Anything you can think of? Um, well, I would say especially for Pony, we we don't do a lot of romantic relationships. We do some, yeah, but because it really is a show. Um, no, we gave you an idea. <laughs> <laughs> still time, right? Not off time, not, not off the <laughs> table. Don't be shy, um, we're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's like a topic that we, that we are really like, no, we can't ever touch that. I think it's more about making sure that when we do uh, choose to do something that, um, that we're really thoughtful about it and we find the right story. I know with um, Applejack's parents, that was a story and, and finding out about that and, and a story sort of about grief, that it was really important that we find exactly the right story to tell that. And it, it took us a minute to, to really 
find the one that we felt, yeah, this, this will really um, do justice to those characters and, and be a really meaningful way to, um, to deal with a pretty tough subject. So not off, nothing's off the table, it's just we're not going to just do it just to whatever. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bird. <laughs> right, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I get rarity, you know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> Ladies, that's what fan fiction is for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People are already furiously oh. typing. <laughs> Um, I would love to know from anyone who would like to answer this question, if you have a favorite villain and why, and remember no season 8 spoilers. No, 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 no. My favorite villain hasn't been revealed yet. So, you're scared of spoilers. I think, uh, Angel Bunny when he grows up. <laughs> Angel? Just, just wait, I'm, I'm just saying, just wait. What about Storm King? Like, uh, Sid from Equestria Games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Anyone else? I like Chrysalis, because I think she has a lot of baggage now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun to watch her deal with that. She kind of went from, like, here yeah. to, like... Yeah, she's, she's, just, not, she's just, like, barely keeping it together. <laughs> I've always loved Discord. I still love Discord, even though he, you know... I know, John DeLance did such a good job, and, like, the first moments we met him are still pretty... Probably some of the best moments of the show. I love this part. Starlight Glimmer? Oh, no. <laughs> she was a good villain. Yeah. Now she's an awesome friend. Someone had to go and reform her. <laughs> uh, Megan has a habit of reforming villains. Like, oh, yeah. um, are there any characters that are particularly challenging to write episodes for, or vice versa? Is there? Do you guys have a favorite? character to write episodes for? Twilight is difficult. Because, uh, because she's played by Tim Strong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, hey, difficult. difficult. <laughs> like, talking about. But, because uh, she's the center. She's like the cog, and sort of like you really feel the weight of it, and you have to write a story about Twilight. When you have to. <laughs> when we make you when write. You have when you're forced. <laughs> and then my favorite character to write is Maude because she says so little. <laughs> I guess we're going back to the what's the easiest part. <laughs> <laughs> way of the game here. Um, I like the CMCs. I gotta say, like when we worked on those books together, the CMC mysteries. Um, so they make me very happy to write them. Another question. Is there, and I'll open this up to anybody, is there a pony slash creature pair up or crossover that you would like to see in one? I would open that up beyond just My Little Pony. Ooh. Oh. <clears throat> Tough one. I know you guys have some. <laughs> yeah. No? Okay, great. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I know I don't want the ponies in Gilead. No. <laughs> Bad crossover. <laughs> Have you done a pony platypus yet? Whoa. That would be no, cool. No, writers, write down pony platypus. A, a, po a, <laughs> a, a pony, a pony puss? A platypony. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh, what? Don't put that on the internet. It's just too hard to say. So maybe I should clarify that. <laughs> I did not necessarily mean, like, in one body. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. I thought that would have been great. What about the Pony West World? We don't know if the ponies are real ponies or AI ponies. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You can write that one. <laughs> um, and uh, one more question for everybody, which is, and whoever would like to answer this, uh, I think for all of us, one of the best things about My Little Ponies is that we have this really, really positive message of friendship, harmony, inclusion, and the world around us is not always so full of harmony. I think everyone's aware of that. So I would love to know from our panel, what hopes Or just our overall message that you'd like to share with our, our awesome audience. <laughs> the next generation will make things better. Please do. Kids, look at you. I like the idea that you can reach out to somebody who's pretty different from you and find common ground and, and build friendship on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Josh that it, this idea that, um, that young people are um, 
being more empathetic and, and having the moral imagination that, that people that aren't like them aren't bad and, and reaching out. And um, so, yeah, watching the show and sort of seeing that that's a message that we're sort of trying to carry out and, and hopefully that, it, that uh, we really see that play out in the real world. And I think it grounds you too when you get so worked up about all this stuff that's happening in the real world and you sit back for a minute and catch an episode or even like a glimpse of a character or remind you of what this show is all about. This show, everybody's a different color. Everybody has a different, you know, origin story and it doesn't matter how old you are. It's just so inclusive and I think it's a very timely grounding show. And in the end, there's just really one party, right? We're all the same. <laughs> You're here. Really? Oh. You have to remember that. You have to hold on to that. These people are As good content. humans. All these people are good <laughs> humans. Our whole cast and crew, really, everyone loves making this show so much. So I think we have a little bit of time for some questions. We'll do our usual thing. Please let the kids go first, please. Okay. I'll let the kids go first. Uh, and while we're sort of lining up for a second, uh, I just want to let okay. everybody know uh, our panel will be doing autographs in the Hasbro booth at noon. You may have noticed we are always oh, watching oh, the t-shirts. You can buy them on Amazon. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I have them say uh, hi to Big Jim? He couldn't be here. He's, um, he's with his dog. He's really sick right now. So I was wondering if you guys could all say we love you, Big Jim. Three. We love, love you, Big Jam! Woo! All right, I think we are ready for our first fan question from the most adorable one I've ever seen. Sorry, Mom has to ask it. No, I just got to totally get it. Get it. Uh, Pinkie Pie is her favorite character. She just had a Pinkie Pie birthday party. Woo! And she would like to know how many Well, okay, let's see. I'm gonna try and count. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 Ah. 
Okay. And jazz hands. Jazz hands. And jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Yeah. Jazz hands. Yeah. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Really, really. 